Günaydın, kolay gelsin. Thank you. Teşekkürler. <gülüyor> Well, that's emotional. Yeah, it is, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's been it's been a great lifestyle, and she's been a wonderful pet. Yeah. And we made some fantastic friends. Yeah. <sighs> on the positive side, we've got Luke together. Yeah. So I'm gonna stop now because we can't. I am at Mount Tambourine and in a minute I'll show you who I'm with. The last video you saw us basically having a boat survey and that was just before we sold ABC. It's been a long time since we posted and we feel really sorry about that. We've just been so sad I think about actually leaving the boat behind and the lifestyle and the people and getting into life here in Brisbane. So anyway, I thought that I would just show you a little video of what life's like now. We're on a seven day holiday on the Gold Coast. We're in the Gold Coast hinterland right now and we're with Luke. First holiday in over six years. Yay! Here we are! <laughs> Very steep drop down there. Yeah, yeah so a long way down. yeah whoever's naughty gets thrown over there. Right. <laughs> oh he's gone. <laughs> Bass has got a fear of heights, he's kind of hanging on to the back rail here, so that's... <laughs> but we just wanted to say hi and hey. thank you so much for, for staying with us on our journey. So sorry it took us so long to wrap up this final video, but... That's slow. Getting we are slow. So. <laughs> yeah. So, um, <laughs> until we see you maybe next time with another random video. Lots of love to you all. More adventures yet to come. Yeah. See ya. See ya. Take it easy. So from here, let's take you back to Turkey, back to October, when we said goodbye to ABC and returned home to Australia, where Luke picked us up at the airport. I actually wanted to start this video with forgive us viewers for we have sinned. It has been four months since our last video. We're back in Australia now, by the way. Yeah, and wow, it's been a really fast paced kind of journey to get here and get set up and... Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. There's se several reasons why we've taken this long to get this video together for you guys and girls. Um, first of all, we were, we came back to Australia with literally the bags that we were carrying, that was our sole possessions. Yeah. So we had to do everything yeah. to um, <laughs> set up a house, you know, yeah. <laughs> buy, a, buy a fridge, buy beds, buy chairs. Kitchen and stuff, stuff, dining stuff. Absolutely everything from scratch. Bathroom stretch. stuff, laundry stuff. Yeah. And a car. Oh, and a car. Yeah, yeah. So, so thanks so, to Ian for that. Yeah. <laughs> so as you can imagine, that's been uh, a long process. Yeah. Um, but we think we've pretty much got ourselves set up now. Another reason was well, I'll let you explain that. Yeah, well, it's been really hard to say goodbye to ABC and Turkey and our friends and the whole lifestyle of being a liverboard. And we've had the footage sitting there waiting to be edited into this video for you guys and gals. And <coughs> we just haven't been able to look at it. Mm. I mean, I want to say that... I'm, and I, I'm sure I speak for you as well. Like we are absolutely stoked to be back with our son Luke. Yeah. That is absolutely a blessing and way compensates for what we've left behind in a huge way. And it doesn't take away from the fact that we really are very, very sad that we had to leave ABC and our friends and Turkey and our lifestyle yeah. behind. So we just we just haven't been able to look at the footage and I looked at it yesterday just 
you know, as a precursor to putting it all together. And yeah, it made me cry. <laughs> but anyway, we're here now. <laughs> so onwards with the footage of us um, getting ABC uh, ready for sale, going through the process of the sale, the unbelievable difficulty of getting flights back to Australia, oh. uh, and the circuitous route that we took, which involved seven different airports. Seven airports, six countries. <laughs> Just to get back uh, to Brisbane. Four days. Oh, four well, days of non-stop travel. Yeah. There's a brief bit where we show you putting together all of our cargo because we had to move cargo. Yeah, we had to have some stuff yeah, sent back for our cargo. So anyway, join us on our journey. Back home. home. This is Tarek from Tarek Tourism just outside Finike Marina Gate and he has arranged our flights and he's also taking us to the airport. So if you're in this area and you want a really good travel agent, he's the man. Thank you. I can't believe it's the last day. <laughs> yeah, I know. Tissue cauldron. Once again, our lives are packed into suitcases. <laughs> Never mind, we'll be home in three days. <laughs> I'm not joking. Goodbye, darling girl. I'm not saying anymore because it's very sad. No words. <laughs> Once again, no words. Bye, everyone. It is. <laughs> love you too. Bye. Love you all. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> Tashi Killer. <laughs> well, that's emotional. Yeah, it is, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's been it's been a great lifestyle and she's been a wonderful boat. Yeah. And we've made some fantastic friends. Yeah. On the positive side, we've got Luke to go home to. Yeah. Right. So I'm going to stop now because we can't talk. flight isn't until 8.30, so we've got plenty of time. Yeah. And, and we've already checked in online, so it's, it's going to be a long three days. Welcome to airport number two. This is uh, Istanbul's new international airport. Apparently it's the biggest one in the world. The flight up here was pretty good. We actually had the business class seats for that part of the flight, but uh, the rest of it is economy. Um, so that was good. And we're just sitting here now waiting until five o'clock when the check-in just over there opens up to check our bags through. And then we 
and sit around for a few hours until the flight leaves at 8.30 tonight. It's good to just stop. Chill. Anyway. Quite impressive this airport, it's huge. We've only been on two flights and I'm knackered. <laughs> Airport number three. Three. Amman in Jordan. Yeah. It's nice. Not been to this country before. No. I tell you what, Istanbul, the big new airport, was absolutely stunning. It's huge. And walking to the gate, I don't know how far it was, but it was maybe a kilometre. three miles. <laughs> um, so we're here now. It's uh, about 11 o'clock at night. Yep. And our next flight out is at 2.30. 2.15. Uh, so that's a nine hour flight to Bangkok in Thailand. We're going everywhere, man. <laughs> we did think we'd see if we can get upgraded if the price is right. But I think we, because we're transiting, I think we've yeah, we bypassed we, the place that you do that. So. Yeah. Because we just experienced the same plane that we'll be on for the nine hour flight, and the seats are really cramped together. Yeah, it is a. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so, well, whatever. <laughs> it's all flowing so far, isn't it? So far, so good. Yeah, so we were on, we want gate 110, so it's that way. Okay. Yeah, it's amazing how the uh, gate areas are all sort of done in a different way in different airports. Not one size fits all, but at least it's pretty quiet. Look, Ooh. She's not getting any. I've just seen a sign that said, um, let your eyes show the beauty in you. Oh. <laughs> My eyes showing the tired beauty. Yeah, um, this is airport number four. This is um, Bangkok International Airport in Thailand. Yeah, it's lovely. And what the hell, it's huge. Uh, we've been walking for about 40 minutes now and we haven't seen half of the shopping area. It is well, just. It's, it's not as large as um, Istanbul. No, it's not as large as Istanbul, but it's, it's, it's big. Um, yeah, we've just done our nine hour overnight and uh, it was really impossible to get any sleep, wasn't it? I think I think it must have got about five minutes <laughs> in nine hours. I was just saying it's a shame that there aren't any um, sort of more local specialised uh, shops. Loads of these things going around. They clean the floor and if you walk in front of them they stop and tell you off. Yeah, but just to go back, probably the reason why it's mainly top-end um, shops is because the rental in the airport would probably be too expensive for local people. Yeah. It just keeps going and going. Oh my word, look at that. Well, you know, we need the walk. We've been sitting down for two days. Uh, we've got a few hours waiting here. The flight leaves at uh, 1940. 19.40, and it's only a two-hour flight to Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia, and uh, then we're booking into a hotel. Uh, we won't get there to the hotel until about half past 11 midnight, uh, 23.30, as we've got to collect our bags at, at, at Kuala yeah, Lumpur. We are already booked into the hotel. Yeah, and um, so. it's right next to the airport. And I think we've got an early start the next day, but at least we'll be able to have a shower and lie down in the bed. Yeah, and a shave. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. We'll see you in the next one. We'll see you soon, guys. Well, it's now coming up to uh, ooh, nearly midnight on our second day. And we've just arrived at the hotel Sama Sama and it is absolutely gorgeous, drop dead gorgeous. And so thanks to Caroline Cox for pointing us in the right direction for this one. Spot on, absolutely spot on. And at the airport you go down one level to level two, you walk 
I don't know, a couple of, couple of hundred metres, not even that. And uh, there's a buggy waiting, and she's summer. a summer hotel on the side of the buggy. And one of the nice drivers, we had a lady driver, she puts all the stuff on and uh, zooms you across through and through the airport, out of the airport, across a, it looks like a dedicated air bridge to the hotel, uh, and drops you right outside reception, and you're in. And <laughs> the place is amazing. This is our room. And you, you come in through the front door, and you're greeted with this. Just down there by Ansha's knees, you can see the uh, reflection of the bar fridge and uh, tea and coffee making facilities there. Beautiful big wardrobe to, I don't know, enhance the uh, volume of the room. Really nice um, big cupboard with uh, usual complimentary gowns, um, you know, temporary slippers, uh, built-in safe. And there's even a, a scale to weigh yourself. And I've already moved my, my trainers in. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> Oh, and is that a torch? There's a torch for emergency use. Wow, that's great. That's amazing. Can't you tell we don't get out much? We don't get out much now. <laughs> Boaties, and we're like, we went, we went to, we couldn't operate the lift. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> I needed to use my card. And I said to Baz, okay, we need to get out more. <laughs> yeah. Nice big screen TV here. We haven't explored that yet. Our, unfortunately, our baggage is just covering this beautiful red uh, settee and also the laptops are over here messing up the desk already. We ordered a twin room because of my sleep apnea and my potential for snoring and tossing around at night trying to get to sleep. Uh, obvious telephone for room service. Uh, room service is uh, uh, 24 hours a day and uh, the kitchen is open 24 hours a day. Air conditioner, of course, a standard in, in hotel rooms everywhere around the world now. Well, ansha has got to now get online and uh, organized the last two flights from uh, Kuala Lumpur to Manila in the Philippines and then from Manila Philippines to Brisbane in Queensland Australia we'll, we'll drop a link to the um, website in the in the description below anyway time for me to fill that empty glass time for Angie to get connected and get to work <laughs> and tell her who's got the boss who's got the boss trousers on here hasn't <laughs> got the boss trousers <laughs> He's already made himself comfy. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the third floor, and probably on every floor they've got this little seating area and uh, balcony that overlooks the lobby, dining area, lounge area. Right. That'll be it for us then. Good Wi Fi signal, even in the lifts. Yeah, when you're going down, you don't need the card. Good morning. All right, time to check out what film because it's impolite. Isn't that a nice backdrop? One of the great things about this place is the shelter. Basically, um, they're always coming and going at 24 7 and uh, they take you gear to the airport and you to the airport. So, we're going to take the trip now. Take you long, but why walk when you can shuffle? <laughs> First time ever, um, we've arrived at the airport before everybody else. Everybody else. <laughs> I just literally walked up to the check-in and uh, watched her uncle. Well, look, she has just taken our passports away and gone somewhere. All right, she's probably not coming back now. We're stuck here forever. Whereas that flight airline over there yeah. is absolutely rammed. 
So I'll check in at uh, Kuala Lumpur Airport. That was quite easy. Even it, though it didn't. It was difficult but easy. Yeah. Um, Obviously, obviously having dual citizenship has had its advantages in the past. I don't believe it does anymore since breakfast. Breakfast. <laughs> since breakfast. It's early in the morning since Brexit. But anyway, that's beside the point. So yesterday when we checked in here, we checked in on our British passports. Therefore, when we checked out today, we've got to check out on our British passports. But when we got to the check-in gate to um, get our boarding passes, the lady took our British passports and said, Have you got a visa? Have you got a visa to enter Australia? Because they won't let you go to Philippines unless you can get into Australia. And we went, we don't need one. So after a while, she, she said, well, how are you going to get into Australia? So we produced our Australian passports. So she took our British and Australian passports away to see Separately. a boss. Uh, and then she came back and went, okay, the solution is, I issue your boarding passes uh, through to Australia. Australia on your Australian passports, yeah. but when you get to passport, uh, passport control. control, you've got to exit here, on which is UK uh, Malaysia on your UK passports. So I don't know how that's going to work when, when we, we get, get to Australia. Australia. We've got no exit stamp in our Cause Australian we, cause, passport. Because, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> we'll so. figure that out on the way. Yeah. Anyway, we're about to get on a train. And just like that, my hopes were dashed. The um, monorail little train thing is um, under maintenance so they've got an actual just a shuttle bus to take us to um, the Terminal C. <laughs> okay. That's a great little cl collection of uh, scale size aeroplanes from all the different airlines. Which one? Oh yeah, this is Michelle. Michelle. <laughs> Brilliant. Just to let you know, if you're ever in Kuala Lumpur Airport and you're flying out of Terminal C, then it's highly recommended that you buy your duty-free stuff if you're going to buy any of that sort of stuff, or food and drink in the main terminal building before you take the shuttle to Terminal C because it's very, 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 very limited what you can buy here. Uh, there's a Starbucks. That's it. Hey, Starbucks. <laughs> they don't even sell Coca-Cola. <laughs> anyway, that's for your information. I must correct myself. If you come to where the, um, the trains that are normally working terminate, then there is a H Smith, a Michael Kors, a relic shop, a cigar shop, and up there is a sandwich shop, and soon to be noodles. Oh, this is airport number four, five. Antalya, Istanbul, Amman, Bangkok, Kuala Lumpur. This is number yeah. five, yeah. yeah. Another thing I've noticed since we've been heading further south and east uh, is that in each individual airport as we progress through the chain, the percentage of mask wearers has gone up. I, I reckon that in uh, Bangkok, there was probably around about 40% of people wearing masks uh, prior to that in Amman there was maybe 20% of people wearing masks. And now we've come to Malaysia, uh, Kuala Lumpur. Um, I would say there's probably 85% of people wearing masks. I don't know why, but uh, it's just an interesting observation to make. I stumble and stutter here because um, I'm still totally sleep deprived. I uh, reckon I'll sleep for a week when I get back to Australia. Anywho, we're uh, about two hours away from departing from Kuala Lumpur, then we got a four hour flight north east to Manila in the Philippines. Uh, be interested to see what their mask wearing percentage is. Well, our Philippines Airlines plane has just turned up at the gate, and it's just quite interesting to watch everyone spring into action to do their various bits and pieces. Um, you know, the walkway comes out, the luggage conveyor belts turn up, they chop the wheels, the fuel truck turns up, baggage handles cart turns up, everyone swings into action. And they've even got the yellow push bar attached already for when the plane gets pushed back out.
Welcome to Manila International Airport. Uh, airport number six, this is um, Manila Airport in the Philippines. Um, we found that each airport has different ways of doing their security. Um, I mean, similar but different. Yeah. Right, we have, we've had our check, uh, bag checked from Kuala Lumpur Malaysia. to Brisbane. But so, here, oh. at the middle stop in the Philippines, the check bags come off the airplane, yeah. go to a special secure room where you have to go down and open your bags for them to inspect before yeah. they can be put on the plane again. Um, Probably because it's going into Australia. Could be. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Well, who knows? Well, who knows? I don't know. But, so, um, but fortunately, we didn't have to actually pick them up off the carousel. They're no, just being they're delivered, delivered to that room. Yeah. It's very busy here, isn't it? It is crazy busy. Hugely yeah. busy. We've had our boarding passes stamped and we've been through the security with our carry-on luggage so at nine o'clock we've just got to go back and do the big luggage. Yeah, and we've got bolt cutters. <gasps> oh, <gasps> forgot about uh, that already. Well, like you say, we just have to cut that in here. And she's got There's three one. three different padlocks on her machine, on her bag. <laughs> one of the keys has gone. one of the keys has gone. <laughs> anyway. Any news so it's a small lock. Yeah, so Probably open it with a nail file. The plane is boarding at 22.45. Departing at 23.30. Yes, so our last flight. So yeah. <laughs> we made it this far. Um, fingers crossed we should be in Brisbane by 9.15 on Thursday morning. Yeah. Right, now to find a loop because I'm dying for a week. Okay. See you later, guys. You may recall from uh, a couple of previous videos uh, at the latest uh, in the story that I was... Um, having problems with uh, an aching muscle, a knotted muscle in my back in between the shoulder blades. As far as we know, trying to find a chiropractor uh, and a proper remedial massage person in, in the area of Turkey where we were would have been like trying to find hen's teeth. So one of the things I did, well, the very first thing I did when I got back to Australia was I found a local chiropractor and a local remedial massage person. The chiropractor, of course, can't do anything to you until you've had x-rays. And it turns out from the x-rays that I have um, the beginnings of arthritis in my spine. And so what's happening is the spine um, is not moving properly and the muscles around that area are contracting to support the spine. And because they're contracting, they're knotted. So I'm now getting weekly massage and um, chiropractic treatment. It is helping. Um, had a little bit of a setback for the Christmas New Year period where people were not available. So I, th I think it was two or three weeks where I couldn't get any work done on me. Um, but now I'm back on the weekly schedule. So that's one of the things I'm kind of grateful for that we did our five years on ABC when we did them, um, because I'm pretty sure as this worsens or we, we keep it managed as best we can uh, as years progress, I certainly wouldn't have been able to manage uh, and skip a, a, a boat with the back being the way it is. So one of the, the outcomes of that is if you're watching and you're thinking of doing something, not necessarily buying a boat and living on a boat, it could be you know climbing a mountain or something. If it's a dream of yours, don't wait until you're retired and your body can't do it. Do it now, Make find some way to do it now. All right. Just a quick follow on to the mask situation. Uh, as I said previously, we are now in Manila in the Philippines. And I would say in this airport in particular, uh, we're looking at 97% mask wearing. Uh, obviously there are still 3% of us not wearing masks. And uh, obviously therefore it is not uh, a mandatory compulsory thing that you must do. <laughs> so that's quite interesting. I'm going to be looking forward to comparing that to what we see when we arrive in Brisbane Airport tomorrow. Uh, I have no clue what the percentages will be there, but I'm going to figure they're going to be lower than 97%. The free Wi-Fi uh, that's offered by Renilla Airport on the air side of things is uh, you're allowed to have 33 minutes of free, air, uh, free work Wi-Fi and then you're locked out for 24 hours. You can buy more. Uh, I'm not sure how you'd go about doing that. Uh, I've got three Wi-Fi's available. Yeah, but you don't know who they belong to. Uh, what, what are they data mining? Um, so, 
Is it a perfect signal strength? It's not really good either. So be prepared for that. We're back. We've made it. Airport number seven, home. Uh, Brisbane International arrivals. Uh, really quick and easy to get out. In fact, the slowest part was getting out of the plane because we were the second row from the back of the plane. Um, then they've got this electronic check through now where they just scan your eyes and scan your passport and you're through. Um, carousel baggage was pretty quick. And uh, then we went through the we've got items to declare uh, lane. And the guy said, okay, you know, what have you got? So Angie had a list of what we had. And he said, yeah, that's okay, yeah, that's okay, yeah, it's okay, it's okay. Didn't even ask to look at them. So no messing around there. He said, yeah, off you go, welcome home. So we're now waiting for um, our son Luke to turn up and uh, see him for the first time in five years. I'm tingling. And she can't function without her coffee, so she's off getting coffee club coffee. Take care. And just to follow up on the uh, mask wearing situation, now we're in Brisbane Airport, which is, you know, an airport where you get lots of people mingling. Uh, just a couple of Asians are wearing masks, really. Because it seems to be the best. That's a cultural thing for them, I think. Um, but nobody is wearing masks. It's refreshing. As soon as we got to the biometric uh, passport thing, you had to take your everything off your face so that the computer will recognise it after that. You just didn't have to wear it. We didn't have to wear them even go in there. Because we walked in and all the guys standing around, no mask on. So let's see when Luke arrives. Okay, quick change of plan because apparently outside where we were standing inside, it's taxi pickup only. So we've been directed to a place called Passenger Pickup and we phoned Luke and told him that we'll meet him there. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Long time no see. Eh? Do you like big fella? God. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> right. Right. First day in. I mean, literally. <laughs> first day in, and literally got off the plane, and uh, just sort of like doing what we're doing. <laughs> Whatever these two are doing behind me. I'm happy. No, I'm happy because I'm sort of going because <sighs> Luke's here. But um, so we've basically done a quick sort of like tour around major parts of Brisbane city, uh, looking at the. Um, tallest skyscraper in Brisbane where Luke works uh, looking at all the uh, rental properties he's stayed in since he left home and uh, looking at all the new developments that are happening across Brisbane it's just a growing city you know there's no signs of any <sighs> repression depression recession compression <laughs> uh, <Jet> <laughs> compression jet lag yeah um, it's a growing city, there's so much building going on, there's so much expansion. Um, so it's totally different from the outlook that we've witnessed in Europe. So yeah, things are different all over the world. Right now, we're coming to, is this the highest point in Brisbane? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, so the highest point in Brisbane is called Mount Kutha. And uh, there's a lookout just up there and we're going to have a look at that and look over the top of the city to the view. <laughs> So just some concluding thoughts, 
Uh, I think first of all, we're very happy that uh, the new owners of ABC are Aussies. Um, we are in contact with them and uh, they, they're already in Turkey as we record this mm -hmm. and already on board. They will be changing the name of the boat because as they said, um, ABC is our brand and um, they don't want to be in anchorages with the name of the boat ABC and people coming up and going, Hi, oh, no, no. <laughs> where are <laughs> Not you? Very <laughs> So uh, that, yeah. that's that's the thing that's going to happen. You know, we we spent five years on the boat um, because we have adventurous spirits. Um, so that's not going to end. Uh, although we, you know, I am working now uh, at a full time job, and she's had. Uh, well, I, I had a Christmas casual job. Um, went pretty much once we got back and sort of settled into the unit that we're in. Um, I'm now looking for full time or permanent work. So, yeah. Well, that does mean, of course, we are restricted to how much vacation time we can have. Yeah. But we thought that we would um, explore the Australasian region of the yeah. globe. Yeah, so uh, I mean, because that is, we, yeah. we haven't been there and it's so close to Australia. Yeah, yeah, and you know, like that also includes Australia itself. Yeah. I mean, we do have a holiday booked in July, we're going to the Gold Coast. And there are some fabulous places around the Gold Coast that we could take you to. Yeah, so basically what we're trying to say here is um, the channel at ABC will go into kind of a semi-hibernation where we will release maybe one or two videos a year of our travels. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're looking at places like the Angkor Wat um, Temple in Cambodia. Yeah. Uh, we're also looking at Vietnam as a place to go yeah. and visit. And then there's Malaysia yeah. and Indonesia. Yeah. I mean, there's so, so many, many places. places. Uh, so we, we yeah. will be fil filming those locations yeah. and those holidays for our own um, memories, if you like. Yeah. Um, but if you if you want to see where we visit, because you know when we visit the old places in Turkey and Greece, um, we sort of like gave you an insight into what it was like. Mm -hmm. So if you want to see the places we're going to visit. We're not going to be sitting by pools and big cocktails for, for two weeks. <laughs> yeah, some of the time. <laughs> but yeah. yeah so uh, yeah, um, let yeah. us know in the comments below if that's something you'd be yeah, interested and in if, watching. Yeah, and if so, where you'd like to see. And um, yeah, we'll do our best to sort of fulfill everyone's day. Oh, and um, one other thing that I was thinking of is that um, we could start a new playlist and maybe call it ABC The World. Maybe. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> it's just thoughts yeah, at the we're moment. Just throwing things up in the air. Yeah. So um, that's this. This is not the end. It's the end of a wonderful, wonderful journey with ABC, who will always hold a huge part in my heart and your heart. Um, but now we've got new adventures, and you can still come along with us if you like us and you like travel, so talk to us in the comments below. We'll see you around. <laughs> <laughs>